Hello and welcome to the latest in ECT Travel's Talking Textile interview series. Today I'm absolutely delighted to be talking with Frank Bennett, the Chief Executive Officer of the National Quilt Museum in Paducah, Kentucky, about the museum's extraordinary collection of contemporary quilts. I hope you enjoy our conversation and it leaves you inspired to come and see the collection for yourself next year with us. The museum's mission, you know, why is it important to promote the growth and expansion of quilting? Because it's a phenomenal art form. Mm. And uh, so I've been here for 10 years mm. and I still remember to the day, the first time I was ever in this building. As you know, the, uh, in the outside world beyond quilting, people under perceive the brilliance of the yeah. artwork yeah. of people who work in, in fiber. And mm. our goal is to bring the work of these amazing artists to audiences around the world. Mm. And uh, I believe I, I believe anybody experiences this art experiences this artwork ideally in person, but at all, it will change their perspective. Mm. They'll, they'll gain an appreciation. And uh, as I joke, as I joke in speeches, everyone who comes here either becomes a fan of the art form or a quilter. Yeah. <laughs> One or the other. Yeah. And yeah. so my favorite part of this entire job is when I see people come in who saw a billboard or, you know, saw our good reviews on TripAdvisor or whatever you guys use over there mm. and, and come, they don't know anything about it. And it completely blows their mind. It's so far out of what they think is possible in quilting. Mm. I never get tired of that. That is so much Fantastic. fun. And how did you, are you a quilter or it, no? No, I just keep the lights on. Yeah, they're on. <laughs> I did that. No, uh, what actually occurred is I'm basically uh, the, just like any other organization, a museum needs the business people that do mm. keep the operations going. Mm. Uh, while I have a massive, massive respect for these artists and love the museum on the art side, my actual job is on the business side. Yeah, okay. And, yeah, I'm okay. do what? Uh, I do a lot of this stuff, but I also do the strategy, operational mm. stuff, and the stuff that just pays the bills. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, and why do you think that that quilting, in particular, and, and all the all the fiber arts, are not considered to be on a level of, of other, even of the other other applied arts? I think it's <laughs> I, I think it's uh, it's just the moment we're in. Mm. So, for example, in the 1930s, we did not consider photography art. No. There was a time when we did not consider ex uh, expressionists art. I mean, Jackson Pollock was ridiculed in yeah, his yeah. time. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Where I've actually seen a shift in the 10 years we're in. Because right. when I first got this job, other art museums would laugh at the idea of doing a fiber exhibit. And now you mm. see it all the time. Yeah. We still yeah. have a long way to go. But the answer to your question is, I just think it's in the moment we're in and it's mm. about education. The mm. more people that experience it, the more that they'll realize that this is on at the same tier as art made in any other material. There's mm. a common thing I say a lot, which is the uh, people make art out of every material you can possibly fathom. Mm. You art that's paintings, glass, wood. We, we could do a list of 75 things. The only difference between people in the quilting space and people in other art spaces is they're just making their art out of some form of fabric. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're just not, you know, we're just going to continue to grow, mm -hmm. get into uh, larger, larger venues, get more exhibits, get more people to expose, get exposed to it. And that's where the general respect will come. Mm -hmm. There's something, and I, it's part of the, the appeal as well, but I think there's something in the, the domesticity and the familiarity of, of quilts and textiles in general, isn't there? That it draws yeah. people, but it also kind of makes us think maybe it's not, maybe it's not art because it should be less accessible somehow. Well, I think a lot of it is just, uh, yeah, we, we could spend an hour just on that topic, but I'll, <laughs> I'll give you a thing that I say a lot. So before COVID, uh, four or five times a year, I would talk to these. Uh, you guys have Rotary where you are, right? Rotary yeah, Club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, R groups like uh, Rotaries and 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 other versions of that, Lions Clubs and stuff. And what I would mm. do is I would take pictures of slides, PowerPoint slides of quilts that look like they're not quilts. Uh, 
forest walk by Pat Durbin, which looks like you're just walking in the forest. Uh, uh, Wisteria by Mark Sherman, which looks like a stained glass window. Quilts that look like they are paintings or other things. And I'll show them to the group. And I'll say, okay, what are you looking at? Someone will say, that's a painting. That's a stained glass window. That's, you know, that's a, that's a painting or a drawing, that sort mm. of thing. Mm. And at the end, and then I'll ask them after each quilt, I'll say, is it art? And they'll say, absolutely, that's art. Mm. So then at mm. the end of showing them five or six, I'll say, okay, in reality, those were all quilts. <laughs> and I'll show them the stitching and what have you. And mm. then after that, I'll say, now, let me ask you this. Now that you know they're quilts, are they still art? Okay. Because if the answer is no, then we're only talking about materials and that's stupid. Mm, mm, mm. If you're mm. actually saying the difference in what is art and what isn't comes down to the materials used, yeah, no, then we really right. have no mm. debate occurring at all. Mm, mm. No, that's a, really, that's a really good way to put it. I mean, it's a... It's a I write a lot about the applied arts and that this is a discussion we have a lot, but I've not heard someone push it quite like that. It's a very, it's a really good point. Yeah. And that's mm. the thing mm. is that, you know, there, we do deal with some biases and you and I can mm. spend an hour talking about that. We both know it, but at the end of the day, I think it's going to come down to people experiencing it because mm. uh, I see people every day. It's an emotional experience. It, mm. it changes the worldview. Mm. And that's what's going to be the long-term difference. That's what's going mm. to bring these amazing artists to bigger audiences. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Um, and the, the museum, you, it's a contemporary collection, isn't it? Um, yeah. So what are your criteria for acquisitions? So when you come, you're going to see two things. We have a core collection. It's called the Collection of the National Quilt Museum, mm -hmm. which now has about 650 pieces in it. And I'll get back to it in a second. And then you'll usually see four or five other exhibits that are traveling exhibits that we'll usually have for about th three months. Uh, we have uh, this year, for example, there'll be 18 exhibit changes. So the thing I tell people is every time you come, you get a whole different experience. Mm -hmm. Back to the collection, to the core of your question. So everything that's in our collection was made in 1980 or after. Mm -hmm. uh, if you walk into the building above the door, it says honoring today's quilters. And uh, so our museum was started by Bill and Meredith Schrader, who were felt like today's cultures were under-respected in the general art world mm -hmm. and wanted a museum to exist that would exhibit the work of today's cultures all year long. That's why our mm -hmm. museum was started. Mm -hmm. The quilts that are in our collection actually represent every style you can possibly fathom, from plays off traditional blocks to things that don't look like any quilt you'd ever seen, that mm. doesn't matter if it's adding mm. if it's at the level in which it needs to be in our collection mm. and it's at the discussion, then we will consider it. Right. And it's international. It's not just, it's not, they're just Absolutely. American. Yeah. Okay. It's international. We have artists from uh, uh, at least 20 states or states, 20 countries in mm. our collection. And uh, we're going to, we want to have the best of the best in modern quilting. We don't care about style. Our point right. at the end of the day, as you know, the point of museums is to give people things to consider. Mm. And so when we're exhibiting out of our collection, we like to show people a cross section of what people are doing in quilting. If you do it perfectly, everyone who comes in will have stuff that blows their mind mm. and stuff that they don't think should be in a museum. But that's yeah. the point is to yeah, give yeah. you something to consider. Mm. Mm. Okay. And, and how, um, you just give us sort of a taste of, of what visitors see. How, how is it all arranged? Is it thematic or technical? It looks, uh, it looks just like any other art museum. So when you walk in, it's a 14,000 square foot gallery that's usually broken down into four or five rooms. Right. And when you walk in, you're usually right in the middle of our collection of quilts from our collection. We have a permanent collection uh, that is all miniatures that you basically walk in at the beginning. And then at a more general level, you're in a big room of quilts from our collection, which we just discussed. It just looks like an art museum. Yeah. I mean, you could replace yeah. all these with paintings. And but are they grouped, like, you know, chronologically or by no. theme or technique or anything? No, it's just random. Um, right. And uh, and then obviously the traveling exhibits are themed mm. because they're traveling exhibits. Mm. So right okay. now we yeah so right now we have a uh, 
every so often we do mix in some quilts that are more traditional, some, some older quilts. Right now we have an exhibit from Mary, Mary Kerr who collects uh, Southern antique quilts okay. in one of the galleries. And the other gallery, this year is our 30th anniversary. Mm. So we put up an exhibit that tells the story of the museum from the okay. first quilt we ever owned nice. to some of the more modern ones. Yeah, that that exhibit is actually going up this week, oh, uh, no. and then we have okay. uh, two others. Yeah, and and that'll appear in about a month in Quilt Museum Digital, and then mm. and then we have two others: a corner gallery which is featuring one specific artist and another one that that's just themed. For the most part, the main gallery isn't themed because we are we have two audiences: quilters come and people who are just art enthusiasts come. Mm. And so for the people who are art enthusiasts and don't know anything about quilting, we want to re represent a con uh, just all the styles. Mm. We want them to leave understanding what modern quilting is about. So they're going to see quilts that look like paintings, and they're going to see quilts that are spins off of log cabins and wedding rings. Mm. But they're going to leave mm. with an understanding of what quilting is about now. So it's not grouped in styles. It it's more just representing the whole community. Okay, okay. And next year, um, if we were to come in 2022, have you, do you, have you got an exhibition schedule for then? We, uh, are you talking about the show? Yeah, or, well, yeah, that too, the... but, but do you know what exhibitions you'll have on in 2022 yet? I don't, know how far I don't yet. No, so no. we usually put out the new schedule around September, October. Okay. Mm, mm. And so... Um, yeah, you can obviously see until the end of 21 right now. Yeah. But yeah, okay. we usually release the 22 schedule in September, October. We're not there yet. Yeah, uh, okay. Unofficially, we probably know quite a bit of it, but it's not public yet. <laughs> no, fair enough, fair enough. Um, and yeah, the show, we, then, yeah. the, the do you get involved with that, the AQS um, quote week? AQS is, is another company, but obviously we absolutely love the show mm. and are excited to have the show come back in 22. Uh, it's just a fantastic event. It has a wonderful energy. Uh, mm. I love all the filters that come and uh, we haven't had it for a few years. So we are looking forward. We think the 22 show is going to be fantastic because people mm. are ready to get out of the house. Yeah, no, they and uh, they so <laughs> aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. So much. So, much so. <laughs> yeah. so if you guys can fill some planes and get some folks over here, mm. I think that show is going to be fantastic. Yeah. We're not directly involved with AQS, AQS, so I can't tell you about what the planning is. No, no. But no. after, two, go ahead. No, no. I was just going to say, do you, you know, is it, 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 do you do anything around the, that time? And, you know, it brings a lot of quilters to, to, to the area, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, we'll have, uh, we'll have top, top notch exhibits. Mm. And uh, we'll definitely have things that uh, people are waiting to see. You know, we, uh, it's always something that, uh, that is unique that, mm. you know, I guarantee we'll have something special, let's put it that way. But Excellent. Either, Good. either way, I think the 22 show is going to be fantastic. Yeah. Everybody should get on a plane and come see it. Yeah, brilliant. Um, and do you have, this is a hard question, but do you have a, a favorite quilt or a, an acquisition you're particularly excited by in the collection? That is a tough question, and people <laughs> do that to me a lot. I don't answer specifically if I have a favorite um, for two reasons, really. Mm. Uh, one, it changes a lot. Yeah. What's great about uh, what's great about what's happening in quilting is, like every other art form, quilting evolves. So I've mm. told you I've been here ten years, and I still all the time see quilts that are just unlike anything I've ever seen. Where these artists are working in innovation. They're working in things they see other people do, and then they'll pull it into their own talents. And every, all the time, I'll see things that look like nothing I've ever seen before. Mm. And wait six months and it'll happen again. Mm. That's one of the things I love about this art form. Uh, and uh, so, and also as my understanding of different techniques evolves, I've started to appreciate quilts that didn't mean as much to me 10 years ago. Okay. As yeah. I've gotten to better understand the difficulty and uniqueness of some things, mm. uh, how difficult it is to create some things. I've gotten to know more quilters. I've gained an appreciation for things that, you know, I just didn't understand as much mm. before. So mm. it mm. always evolves. And that's one of the cool things. Mm. Mm. Absolutely. There's always something new. Um, and just just finally, the quilt initiative. I saw that on your on your um, website. Yes. Just tell me a bit more about what that is. 
Yeah, so we decided uh, at the end of the day, our goal was to be uh, the growth and expansion of quilting. And so we put together four tiers, essentially, as you saw on the website, that are key to quilting growing and becoming stronger as time goes on. It's very important that, first of all, the quilts being made today and yesterday are preserved so people can experience this artwork 100 years from now. Mm -hmm. I'm very, very concerned about quilt preservation. Quilts are harder to preserve than you know wood and glass mm -hmm. and things like that. Mm -hmm. And it's a shame because these are artworks that tell a story of our history and where we're living now. And uh, we need to take every, do everything we can to preserve every quilt. Not every quilt will end up in a museum, but every quilt needs to end up preserved and stored in a manner mm -hmm. to where you can open it in a hundred years and there'll be something there. And mm -hmm. that, that's very, very important to us. And we're really twofold. First of all, first in how we handle museum level quilts, teaching other museums, being kind of the standard leader on this, and also in educating everybody who has a quilt in their house. Mm. As you know, more quilts are going from the people who made them to the next generation mm. than ever before right now. Mm. And it's so important that people at least understand the basics, uh, put it in an acid-free box, use acid-free paper, keep it in your house, not in a basement or attic, mm. uh, you know, keep it on a shelf and not on the floor where insects can be involved. Uh, keep it out of direct light, keep it out of sunlight, mm. that kind of elementary stuff. Mm. It's just very important because we cannot lose this art. So that's mm. one thing. And then the other ones are related to educating the next generation of quilters. Uh, basically, we know for a fact that if you get people into the process of quilting, when they're young, when they're elementary school, it'll be part of their life forever. Mm. And that's what's mm. gonna sustain us as an art form. And we also need uh, more exhibits in more places. We need uh, more art museums doing, doing more exhibits, more people involved, because that keeps us strong. At the end of the mm. day, quilting is a special part of our lives. It tells the story of who we are as humans. Yeah. Yeah. And maintaining that and keeping it strong into the future is very important to us. Mm. Are you optimistic about, about the future? I mean, it seems to me that lots of people are interested in quilting and wanting that, you know, not it's not a dying art. It doesn't, it doesn't feel to me. No, <laughs> it's definitely not a dying art. In fact, I'll, I'll give all your folks something to say to people who say that. So uh, people who say that will say, well, I don't see very many 20 year olds quilting. You also don't see any 20 year olds golfing. All right, the quilting <laughs> is, a, is a life cycle activity where te most often people have their kids go away to college mm. and then they get into quilting. The average mm. person gets into quilting in their 40s. And mm. the joke that I often tell in speeches is that the average golfer is 62 years old. <laughs> they, they get into golfing as they yeah. get into the second half of their lives as professionals. Mm. Quilting is like that too, mm. where it's not dying out. It's just no. a life cycle art form mm. where people mm. are in their 40s, usually when they become quilters. Mm. But I, that's absolutely silly. It's just, mm. it's just misunderstanding. No, and, and, and actually think, this past year, I think when people have been so, had so much more time, you know, all yes. of these crafts are becoming much more popular and people are discovering that it's, it's good for it. It's good for us to be doing, you know, creative things with our hands and making things. Oh, the amount of quilts and projects and masks and all that we've seen over the last mm, year. Mm. So you've probably seen that National Quilt Museum has a, a block of the month group. Mm. It's, a, it's a group in Facebook. It has uh, close to 20,000 members at mm. this point mm. where mm. Uh, a quilter designs the block every month mm. and then members of the group make the block. Well, over the last year, the group has gone berserk. I think mm -hmm. it's gone from 13,000 members to 20,000. Yeah, it's fantastic. And it goes to what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And, I, and it, I think that will persist. You know, I think people have discovered that making things with our hands is, is a, just a really enjoyable and, and it's good for us. It's a sort of mindful thing to be doing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. We've literally, we've literally been making things with our hands since, since the Stone Age. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's and, part and, of who we are. 
yeah and we've we've sort of lost that because everything's so digitized and i think you yeah. know, rediscovering it we've realized how important it is you know um and that's what I really appreciate. Tell all your folks uh, to join the, our block of the month group. It's free. And okay. even if you don't make the blocks, just read people's comp people's comments. Mm. People feel such a sense of accomplishment. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah. learning new skills. They're completing them. They're interacting yeah. with other artists. And they, it creates such a sense of self mm. accomplishment. You feel like you can do things you didn't know you could do. Mm. You know, that's mm. innately valuable. Yeah, yeah, no, abs absolutely. Lovely to talk to you. Thank you very much.